Okay, I got my camera going. I've been fiddling around with making VLC video streams. And it didn't work as great as I thought it would. Um, get over here in the desktop. I found a script that, uh, and I showed it in the previous video, so I'll show it for a second. But I found this script that uh, can make a VLC stream uh, run it in the terminal. You can just run. I ran once. I just ran it by double click on it. Then I didn't have a way to stop it right. So because you couldn't hit Control C to stop it, that's how you're supposed to stop it. But it doesn't. It's supposed to. It makes two files: uh, a wave audio file and an MP4 video file. And it's supposed to merge them into a WebM uh, once you're done. And that part doesn't work. Uh, I even tried editing this script and tried to make it make a MP4, but actually did the same thing both last two times I tried to run it. So uh, I was going to delete that, but I'll leave it for now. Uh, but there's the last two files I ran, I, I made, and um, see, so yeah, I'm still making my video over here. I think so. It's not making a, a, it's big of a video, so it takes a bit longer for yeah. There it goes to change. Because I'm using FFmpeg now as and an F, and making an FLV, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna go ahead and move those over. Yeah, there we go. I thought I had to rename them. I kept renaming them. I finally realized now why that was happening because I was making. Uh, I didn't need to rename them because they all have the date and time in there. That's what that long number is, and so they're not all the same name. I renamed these. Uh, thinking they well I wanted to get them in the order of when they were made to I may go ahead and upload them but anyway um, I kept putting those you know I put the ones and twos on the end I didn't need any of that um, I'll probably fix all that later but, uh, <clears throat> but anyway they uh, I only got one that no none of them I never got it to make make uh, automatically merge and make a file I got let's see what was it this one I, I used VLC to merge that was one reason why I was numbering them like that, you know. Let's see, one, one. Oh yeah, I did that one, and it turned out to be audio only. I used VLC stream and save, uh, or convert and save. Actually, is what it's called. You could stream, but you you can stream and save if you want. But anyway, I did convert and save, and uh, so these two I merged into this one, and. Uh, I think that's anyway yeah when you start doing that that's when you start getting you're going to overwrite the file yeah it has the same number there as the wave file that's what happened and so i had to put a two on that one uh so i haven't done any you know merging or anything with these manually in vlc if i wanted to upload them as videos i would need to do that and only upload the ones that are should probably put vlc on the end or something yeah they don't say vlc on them so, um, instead of putting two there, I'll put VLC. That should be enough for now. Okay. And um, that was just the default name that they the, the little script gave it. But, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work as like, it's, like I thought it would, like it's supposed to. But, uh, anyway, it, it does do... Uh, you know, like you have to, you, you select what window you want to record in. I never did try moving around. For all I know, it could have moved around with me, but uh, it did get everything. And if I opened up another, like open up a file or I had the terminal window open, I could, you know, minimize it and go back and it would show everything in this window. So it didn't just do like Crusader. I was afraid it was only going to do Crusader because when it starts up, it gives you a crosshairs and you click, it says to click where you want to go, you know, where you want to record. So, um, anyway, it was interesting, but what I was doing was looking for an uh, alternative to stream, you know, a way to stream. If I can't, st if, if VLC is going to stay broken and I can't stream with it, then I was looking for an alternative. Open up my browser and, <clears throat> and uh, that ran across that. And, uh, and that was something I had been thinking about. Um, uh, wanting to be able to do because when you do when you you can when if you do set up a stream it's tricky to get it to work uh, or else I, I just can't remember the exact settings or whatever but oh i had found the settings that was part of it um part of what i found there 
Now I don't remember. Oh yeah, software, software. Well, I'm in the near it. I'm I'm near it. So let's see. Um, video. I think it was video streaming. Oh, it's the one that the it's a new folder I just made. I think. Yeah. Desktop recording. Um. Now I'm not sure which one. Maybe that one. Oh. It just went back to it for me, so that wasn't. When I opened the browser, it, it restored my previous session. Here's the script where I copied and pasted it and made the script. Um, and uh, it didn't. He didn't say in his post like how to stop it, and I didn't remember. But the common way to stop a stop something running in the terminal is Control C for quit. Oh, I don't know why Q is quit. That's why I don't ever think of it. Um, but anyway, Control C is how you do it, and it did, that does work. But only once did it pop up and say, "Do you want?" It's supposed to pop up and say, "Do you want to make a WebM?" And, it, and I said yes, but it failed. It tried to do it, but it couldn't do it. Now above here, I had to, this is some detailed instructions on how to make a desktop. Get a good desktop video. You can do a lot of different settings in VLC, and most of them don't work. <laughs> So anyway, those instructions were pretty good. Uh, well, I think they are. They look good. But actually, I did try them. Uh, well, sort of. Or did I? No, I didn't try just a regular desktop recording. I tried to use these settings to convert the uh, two files that I got from this script. And that didn't work. I ended up just using the default MP4, I think it was. Uh, but the first one, the video, well, I, I had double-clicked on the file, and it ran. I just double clicked on it it would run, it'll run and start recording but then you don't have a way to close it except for I got it except for to get in here and I found it I found the process uh, I looked for uh, VLC and there's no VLC running now but there was then and so I did uh, like say if I was to do that on Firefox I, I knew I didn't want to end process and so I, I knew there was other things you could do and I, so I tried to stop and it said stopped said it was stopped and then uh, later on, I, I, I was an hour and 12 minutes before I finally gave up. <laughs> he was still, you know, recording. <laughs> and everything I said, I was still talking, you know, but I was moving around my desktop. But anyway, uh, well, that time I was moving around, but the video didn't work. Uh, I think it might have broke it when I did that. That's what I'm guessing now. And continue, it started back up. But it turned out that the video was, you know, well, it actually, it, it was broken because it just showed to be a few seconds long. And then I tried to, finally I did terminate and that did stop it. It probably does pretty much the same thing as in process, but if, if you hold, hover over that, it tells you now it's gonna probably lose your work. So I thought, well, that's not the one I want. So um, anyway, it was interesting. And uh, <clears throat> I did make several OBS videos. I actually did, I made an OBS video while this one was streaming and it worked, but uh, it was interesting, but not at all what I was looking for. Um, ow, my finger. Oh, I've got pains in my fingers. But where this is is in uh, askfedoraproject.org. The question asked was, how can I capture a video of my screen in Fedora? And that was actually what I was doing, was looking for alternative ways, uh, apps to use. Um and I found these two pages here that I didn't go back and read it. Let's see what they have to say about all that. That's what that one was. May not be much. Oh, simple screen recorder from Debane. Well, that's what I was using. It runs and uh, that's good. It real well. It works really well. Real easy. Um, I have it now. There's the icon for it right there. Um, it only, of course, does the desktop. You can't do cameras and everything like OBS. And it it can. I did see a, pay, uh, a comment on his website where uh, he said someone said they figured out how to stream to YouTube, and I just kind of tried it real quick, and it didn't work because there wasn't no way to log in, put in your stream key to log in, you know. And so I didn't I didn't read his whole explanation, but uh, it only does desktop. But I guess that'd be better than nothing. So I might go back and revisit that. But I, I remembered XSplit. I had used it before, but it only runs in Windows, and uh, 
I'm not running Windows. I don't even have. Only thing I have is an XP virtual machine in here that's Windows, so it's not going to be of any use to me. And so, okay, so yeah, simple screen recorder is good. There, there's the icon for it, the, or the screenshot of it. Must be the all what this is all about. Yeah, it is. So, um, actually, maybe that's uh, not the page I was thinking it was. Oh, that is for simple screen recorder. That's why. No. Oh. Screencast, record my desktop, etc. Oh, okay, it's for more of that. I'm not sure where I saved my uh, links that I just had. Let's see. Recording on YouTube. Oh, and this is somebody, they had laid out what, you, this is old though, I can tell you that right now, because YouTube takes 4K now. So that's not where I was saving my stuff, so my links that I just now found. Oh, why didn't I just, uh, here we go. History, recently closed windows or something. Let's see. Well, there's one of them right there. Yeah, nine best and eight best. That was the two that I was thinking of going to look at. So that's what I was looking for. Okay, now I didn't read this yet, so let's see what it is. Um, screen recorders for Linux. How old is it first? 2019. Okay, that would be helpful. Because some, like uh, Record My Desktop is the one I used for years. It's not available in Fedora anymore. It's not in 28. Uh, well, I didn't look for it. Any, I don't know. I think I noticed it before. I tried to find it. Maybe it was 28 when I noticed it. And I'm on 28 right now on this machine. My server, I just put 29 on it. So what's this one? Kazam. Never heard of that one. Okay. Simple, multiple video, audio recording. Okay, single window or select a screen area. That might not be good. Uh, one thing I will, I definitely have to have is when you switch around, you see, you see it. You know, a simple screen recorder does do that, so that's good. It says apt install, so it may not even work in Fedora. You don't use apt in Fedora. I guess this didn't say anything about Fedora, did it? Okay. Okay. Um, apt is for the bang. So anyway, uh, Fedora uses DNF. Let's see. I guess, is this another one? No, that's still Kazam. Open Grog Tester, that's what I'm recording with right now. OBS Studio. Um, it's really fantastic. It's professional levels software, I would say. And uh, Simple Screen Recorder, that's the one I was using yesterday, the one I just discovered. I really like it, and it's definitely a good alternative. If you, like, for instance, I want to record, I wanted to show some things that uh, some of the menus in. Uh, OBS, like see profiles, you can't show that in the recording because you can't access it while you're uh, recording. And so and then also some of the settings. So I was able to show all that. That was pretty cool. And then um, record my desktop is no longer available, period, for uh, Fedora. It's not in the RPM Fusion repos. It's nowhere to be found. And I don't know. This 2019 I was starting to think that this project was no longer around, but it's probably, probably is. I don't know that I actually went to their uh, site. Well, I thought I did try to go to it and it wasn't there, but anyway, I don't know. Uh, Voco, I've never heard of Voco either, let's see. multiple video output format audio recording oh it'll do a webcam preview support does that mean it can oh maybe that means you can just open a webcam app and <laughs> record it on the desktop you can do that 
uh, you know, like VLC, it, it actually directly takes your webcam uh, input, you know, your USB webcam input and you know, record and displays it, you know, pro properly like it should. But you can just open a webcam in preview and then show that sh screen, you know, and then it'll show your video. But it's not as not optimal because uh, then if you switch uh, anything, anything, you know, you lose your webcam view. Oh, and uh, it, it's oh installation on Ubuntu. Okay, I thought that said Istanbul. There's one that I, is no longer available called Istanbul that I did use a long time ago in Fedora. Oh, it's called, this is another one, Screen Studio, written in Java. Oh, no, this one streams. That's what I'm looking for, something that streams. I forgot to pay attention to those others. I think this is the first one I've seen that would stream, though. Rev camera recording, okay. Lots of dependency. Yeah, it all runs on Java. Okay, let's see. And then it just says you bent to it. Probably doesn't run on Fedora. Probably why I never heard of it. <clears throat> Which it should run on Debian. Well, not everything that runs in Ubuntu runs in Debian, even though Ubuntu is built on Debian. Sometimes it's <coughs> just Ubuntu is so changed up that it's not a you know not. Completely debane, debane anymore. A <coughs> green recorder. <coughs> Multiple formats. Xorg is the original, or original since, I don't know how I said original, but in, when I got into Linux in 05, 2005, with Fedora 5, the Xorg, it has been the display software until they started using Wayland in some of the, some Linux distros. And I had thought Fedora had changed to Wayland, but everything I see lately, I'm paying a lot of attention, but it seems to me that I'm, it's still using Xorg. Because it's, um, well, I won't go, I don't want to go around and around, get off sidetrack. But uh, I don't know why they keep, why they mention GIF support. I mean, why would you want to be making a desktop video and turn it into a GIF? I mean, sure, you can make an animation, animate a GIF, but they get huge fast. If you make <laughs> your whole desktop video, unless they've got something new that I, I haven't messed with them since late, you know. 98, 99, uh, 2002, you know, back in those days. That was a big deal back then because you couldn't, uh, you know, dial up connections. You couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't do a whole video. And besides that, AVI was the, that was before MP4s, you know. AVI was what you made videos in and it was, didn't stream and it was too huge to, uh, of a file to, I mean, I did up, well, I downloaded some here and there, but. Anyway, you had to have a very short video because there was such a huge problem. But high quality, they're still on the highest quality video format. But no webcam recording. Well, it's supported. Okay, let's see. What's this? Peak. GIF. For animated GIF from a desktop. Yeah, okay. Well, that wouldn't be of much use to me. There's a lot here. Several I haven't heard of. Geefine. Stitching short GIF videos. That's weird. Okay, so interesting. Let's see. Stream. Which one was the one that would stream? Oh, OBS, of course. Yeah, I just skipped it. Um, Screen Studio. Yeah, that one. What? Oh, I think I got down there and decided it's probably not even going to run on uh, 
If they don't give any anything mentioned, you know, fedora at all, then probably doesn't work on fedora. Nice if they would uh, at least acknowledge another distro besides you point to in the vein, wouldn't it? Okay, now I'm on the nine one, right? Yeah, so let's try the eight one. I opened those up and then I got sidetracked with that VLC. Uh, let's see where I saved those. I saved them in video editors, live streaming effects. Okay, that's where I saved them. Simple screen recorder. Record my desktop. <clears throat> I wish they would give the, uh, there it is. I wish they would give the address. There it is. It's a, it's a good one. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out how to make it, uh, audio and video stay in sync when you're doing a desktop video. But the trick I finally learned was, you know, normally even well with OBS, you, I, I run at 30 frames per second, and, and that's perfect for switching back and forth between camera and desktop. But with record my desktop, finally found some information somewhere on their side, and you need to go down to five frames per second on your desktop video. Well, that's all it does is desktop videos, and uh, and then your your audio and video will stay in sync. Uh, what it would do is if you started out at well, I knew you couldn't do 30, so I went I went down and down to 15, got down to 15. And I was like, well, anything less than that should be terrible. Uh, and it would stay in sync for up to about an hour and then or 30 minutes to an hour, just depending on what it wanted to do, and then it would get out of sync. And uh, <clears throat> somewhere I finally found go to do five frames per second, and it worked perfectly. So once I learned that, it was really good, and I guess it's still that way. And um, and then you know, there's a, now record my desktop is a term a, you know a command line application but there are two GUIs for it uh, GTK record my desktop um not uh, and well there yeah Pi GTK they used to just go yeah GTK record my desktop and uh, QT record my desktop that's the names of them I didn't know there was a Pi in front Pi I guess is for Python recording uh programming program program uh, programming uh, gosh I'm losing my words here <clears throat> um, so anyway um, yeah that was a good idea do that read the documentation and stuff because it's not you have to know how to use it but it um, The only formats that it uses is uh, Theodora, Theora for video and Vorbis for audio. And YouTube doesn't take that using the OGG container. Actually, you can name your files dot, oh, that's, you know, your file extension dot OGV. Actually, it's used to be better to do that unless they, something's changed because a video player would just think it's an audio file and only play the audio or some of them wouldn't accept it like some video players can't play audio files and so it just won't play it but if you just name it .ogv then it, uh, most video players in Linux will play it or Windows I think I don't know I know about Linux anyway um, so anyway um, but it's not like I said it's not anywhere to be found in the Fedora repo anymore so you used to could just install it but um, So there's, I don't see anything about, oh, next, okay, so <laughs> there's the guide, there's the actual guide, okay, that was weird, I just want to see if there's anything in here about Fedora, okay, and what's this one, FAQ, yeah. So 
So really, I don't need it now because that other one, that simple screen recorder really works well. It has lots of options, nice GUI. The, the GTK and the QT GUIs are really, you know, kind of pretty simplistic, not not too, well, it's got option, plenty of options actually, but you really need to, well, you need to read the how-to to understand how to use a lot of them. Even if you already know about streaming and audio and video, audio and video, Codecs and stuff I did. Uh, used to do it back in Windows before I got into Linux, you know. But there's a lot of things, like for instance, the frame per second thing, you know, that's something I like to never figure it out because it was backwards. It was counterintuitive to me. So anyway, it is a good one once you figure out how to use it. So um, I record my desktop. Well, there's a, what the interface looks like. Uh, it is pretty simplistic, but when you get into the advanced, there's quite bit more you can do voco screen i don't think i saw that one yet oh it allows access to webcam while recording but it doesn't say whether or not you can actually add a cam as a source just keep going screen studio that one streams that one I just saw a while ago I think it is <clears throat> I think it's one that uh, didn't say anything about Fedora. This one gives you the links to the websites. Doesn't say the Fedora. Uh, the Fedora. Doesn't say Bain either. Okay. For Ubuntu, oh, it just says Ubuntu, OS X, and Windows. So, uh, Actually, I'm not even going to put it in there. It'll just aggravate me to go to it and find that it won't work. Yeah, the one on Java, built on Java. I don't like things built on Java anyway. They're usually buggy, and they're, and Java is so open to, you know, exploits. So. If there's a way somebody could mess up your Linux system, it would be through Java. Probably the number one thing I can think of. <clears throat> Well, the web browser would be number one, I guess. Which it might be through Java, but anyway. Looks like that's a VP8 and WebM, so. <clears throat> that one looks like it's only for, uh, I think I already saw that one, I remember that. So I don't think it works. It just it doesn't mention Fedora. Space recorder. That's an interesting one. It, it's a it's a terminal app, a command line app, but it does have a little bit enough of a GUI that you can use it without having to do that too. But it only says that it makes uh, GIFs, animated GIFs. I don't know, maybe they've got something going with GIF files now that you can actually make a video <clears throat> that's not huge in file size. I don't know. They started making, you know, JPEGs into videos a long time ago. And they were just originally just still pictures, you know. And now it's a video format too. So they use them in security cameras a lot, have for a long time. <clears throat> VLC, that's what I was just talking about earlier. And it is very powerful if you want to learn how to use it. The only thing is, if you 
Run it in the GUI, it will use a lot of system resources, or at least it has any any of the codex and all combinations I've picked and are the ones that I could get to work. Uh, <clears throat> and I was just now running it in that script, and it uh, wasn't too bad. It was running around 12 to 14 percent of my CPU. And normally, let's see, now right now, OBS has been doing really good. See, it's, right, it's at 12 percent right now. And that's that has just started now. It normally stays 23 to 30. It depends on what I got. Like if I switch to a dual camera view or just one camera, and then I switch back and I look over here, I'll see that it's been at 30. And then it goes hurts and goes down when I go to the desktop. I mean, you know, it was on the camera. What I'm saying is I was on a camera for a good while, and then I switched to the desktop when I came over here and looked, and it was at 30, and I watched it go down. But it would never go down below about 22, 23, 21 maybe. And I switched just yesterday to FFmpeg as the uh, encoder and, F and FLV like I've been going all along. And I'm at a higher bit rate than ever before. I'm at 4,000 instead of 2,500 or what it was at you know, by default. So the uh, only thing is I'm kind of thinking that the, you know what, I was thinking the videos were looking a little fuzzy, but now I realize my eyes are fuzzy. Everything looks fuzzy to me today. So, uh, <clears throat> I guess it's, it's probably good. I think it's going to be good. Uh, OBS, that's what I'm recording with. But, yeah, let's go ahead and... My new system doesn't have all my links. All my I didn't import my bookmarks because they... Uh, let's wait till it comes in. Uh, I didn't import my bookmarks because they... Uh, slow the browser down too much and overwork the machine. VLC is my favorite player. I started using VLC back in Windows 98, I think, before I ever learned, ever heard of Linux. And uh, but it's not just a player. They call it Video LAN because it was made to stream and play video over the LAN, you know, the local area network. Uh, see, nonlinear editing software. Uh, you really can well. <clears throat> um, you can do live editing basically like you can give it two different sources and I, well there's all kinds of effects I did that before uh, some effects that I still haven't ever seen in like video editors like Kden Live or whatever um, so I would take a video I already made and then I ran it through VLC and saved the output and um, ran it with effects on it and it turned out pretty cool so uh, you can, uh, I've done, a long time ago did video editing with VLC. So anyway, um, yeah, open broadcaster. So there we go. That was interesting. Okay, now. <coughs> um, is this the one... It looks like I have two, uh, yeah, I've got two folders now with that kind of stuff in there, I see. So I should probably put this stuff in that other folder I already made. Well, actually, the desktop recording I should put in here, that's what it should be. I'm, turning, I'm getting myself turned around. Um, let's see. Ah, I know where it, where, what I'm... And, uh, what I have been planning on doing is going ahead. You know, when I uninstalled OBS yesterday, uninstalled it and uh, reinstalled it. And let's see, I'll go on my desktop. And um, <coughs> the config dot config folder in your home folder in Fedora all this is turns out to be where all of your OBS uh, your logs are your plugin stuff uh, services uh, let's see where's the rest yeah scenes that's where all your scenes are saved that's where all your profiles are saved and it did not delete that I thought it would and I didn't remember to look <coughs> and uh 
So when I reinstalled it, it just came right back up with all my same scenes, which is very convenient, but it could be something in that those folders that, uh, that's the wrong. Well, oh, I'm still in the config folder. Virtual box. Oh, config for virtual box. Yeah, that's where a lot of your, most of your config stuff is now in Fedora, if you wanted to know where that was. I was wanting to get back in here to see that, make sure my video still being made. Okay, so, um, so anyway, so it didn't fix it. It still crashes when you try to stream, but it still records just fine. Uh, actually, I, I did a bunch of reading and looking today, earlier to this evening, um, and uh, let me get on the folder I was looking for. OBS. Okay, now. Um, yeah, here's what I wanted to show. But anyway, um, it's it. Lots and lots of people are posting about it, all you know, especially on the OBS forums and stuff. So evidently, something's broken in OBS. Uh, it's really been. I see a lot of posts on Fedora 29. So, so anyway, I thought I would uh, reinstall it again, but make sure and delete that folder. I've got it backed up. I backed it up yesterday because I wanted to, in case I needed anything from that folder. Uh, but anyway, reinstall. And delete that folder, you know, uninstall it, delete that folder, and reinstall. And if that doesn't fix it, then I could try going back. I got, I was looking around on the side, and you can, you know, I thought, well, you can usually always download an older version. And it was, I thought it could have been the last update that was broken of OBS. And, uh, <clears throat> and so if I go back to an older version, maybe I'll be fine, you know. I just it finally dawned on me about that. I usually don't like, I usually don't have to do that, and I don't like to do that, but, uh, uh, and the thing is, uh, the the thing that people keep answering back, well, check your NVIDIA video drivers and so And Well, I don't have NVIDIA. I don't have an NVIDIA. I have an onboard in, uh, Intel video. It's, I mean, there's an onboard in, in NVIDIA's too, but uh, I don't have in, NVIDIA. I have an Intel video. I check that. And uh, most of the stuff is in Windows that you see, all the posts, so it's really hard for me to get a lot of help out of it too. But I have seen several on Fedora 29 and uh, they say the same thing everybody's saying the same thing with one day it's working the next day it's not so that leads me to believe it was a an update that that has something has something broken it so here is something that could be an alternative this is called OBS NDI uh, network integration uh, and what it does uh, uh, well, there it is. Add simple uh, audio, video, input, and output over IP using uh, Nutex NDI technology. Now, I never heard of that before, but uh, he has three plugins that he wrote, <coughs> and uh, it adds an NDI source in your OBS program, and uh, it adds an output to transmit. And uh, what I'm beginning adds an output to transmit. Uh, transmit the main program view over NDI. Now it seems like you. The only thing that might not work for me is two things, and then uh, a special OBS filter that uh, outputs its parent OBS source to NDI uh, audio works only with video capture sources, media sources, and VLC sources. Well, I'm going to be using. Uh, maybe it won't work with the camera. Oh, video capture. Yeah, so it works with what I want. Oh, I guess it doesn't work with desktop video then? Works only with video capture, media, and VLC. Oh, that means you couldn't do desktop videos. Oh, well, that kills it, really, then, because that's mostly what I do. Um, <coughs> yeah, because I need to be able to talk, you know. Uh, but it really is interesting, except for I think maybe what I'm thinking is if your OBS crashes on start stream, then maybe it wouldn't work anyway. And the other thing is uh, when I went to the download page, uh, I, I only saw stuff for Debane. I didn't see anything that said it worked in Fedora. So, uh, 
Oh yeah, this is. I think this is the first page I found on it right here. And everybody's people were saying it works great, and it's not. You know, didn't say it was hard to set up and get going. And here's the GitHub page right here, where you go to download it. I'm trying to get just that <laughs> section there. And um, this is where I got the idea that uh, well, it tells you right here. It says. Uh, on Linux, and it says to bang your butt to, and then you tells you how to use the commands to install it and everything. And you can download it, and I did. Um, and it gives you a zip file. Uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, I think I put it in there. There it is. <coughs> I'll show you what uh, what it looks like. So, uh, yeah, there's not a, inst uh, there is an install script in here, one of these folders. Before you deploy, install, build. Not sure which one you might run. Some of them, yeah, it said you needed CMake, but there's some CMake files right there. I don't know. Well, I don't know if I have CMake or not, but I would have, I, it would be easy, it should be easy enough to get. Just go to the, you know, the Fedora repos and install CMake. But, uh, yeah, so those scripts that I saw, <clears throat> we saw a second ago. But there's not a, like a, you know, usually in the main folder there's like an install sh or something like that, but there's not one there. Make list, license, readme tells you, actually I saved the readme separately so I could look at it. Where is it? I must have went out too far. Oh, there, no. Yeah, here it is. I renamed it. So, um... receive NDI video and audio and OBS okay so you got to have OBS to receive it so that that the the, the advantage here is uh, they this is a gamer guy and he was kind of wrote it for himself and other gamers you know games are really intensive on your CPU usage so you you just play your game in the machine and then you stream the output to another machine that handles all the OBS work you know and it I've kind of thought about that kind of thing before. Um, it would be cool if you could do something like that. <clears throat> Just so, and so uh, you can. If you got, I guess you're going to have to run to Bainer you've been to, though. Transmit audio and video from OBS to NDI, aka uh, dedicated, aka NDI dedicated output. Transmit a single source or a scene to NDI. So, uh, Oh, a scene. So I wonder if you can't switch scenes. Maybe you can. So it may be a little more limited than I realize. I'm beginning to see things I didn't see before when I was reading it. So Windows, Linux are available there where we just went. And uh, you'll need CMake and a working development environment for OBS Studio installed on your computer. Windows, Linux. And so it just says the Bane and Ubuntu, and there's those same instructions. So... Uh, but there is one thing I saw down here, uh, automated build, and I went to that page, and it uh, it actually uh, automatically sets it up and installs it in Docker. Well, I've been want, kind of wanting to install Docker. I don't think I installed it on my Fedora 29 server yet, but uh, actually I did install it on the IBM, but it was 32-bit, and it installed, but it couldn't run because it was only 32-bit, and it needs to, your machine has to be 64-bit. But if I didn't install Docker, I could. So I thought, well, maybe I could install it in Docker and run it that way. Actually, I might, maybe I could use my server as the, you know, the main streamer uh, or the uh, the one to, well, send it from this machine to the server and then from the server up to YouTube. That's what I'm trying to say. But, uh, but if I can't install, if I can't install it on this machine, I'm, I don't, I, don't, I guess I could install Docker on this machine, but. Anyway, that's turning into a heck of a lot of work. <laughs> but it looks like I, I couldn't do it 
other than doing it that way. Um, so anyway, but if you're interested in that, that is really could be cool. Um, let's see what else I have. There's the GitHub page. There it is, automated build. <coughs> Here's the page for it. Um, and it avoids having to use any hardware or anything. I know that. And they were saying instead of using RTMP servers, and that is hard. That's what uh, that's one of the protocols you can stream with you uh, with VLC. I used to do that. I used to set up streams from VLC on my local network, but then I was just you know nobody to watch them but me, so it was just a plane for a while or for a long time and get it going and then shut it down because I didn't have really anything to do with it. One thing I did learn though, and that I did use a lot was. Uh, Set up a stream, <coughs> and then <coughs> and then have it streamed. It was streamed to set, stream and save at the same time. That's what you, what I did. And I uh, guess it's a little different now because uh, you can just convert and save now. I guess you could always do the one. I was doing that a while ago uh, with that uh, VLC stream script. You know, converting my my two separate files into a single video file. But, uh, and here's some, I guess they would download these ones, but these are older than what's on the GitHub page. But I noticed here, I was like, oh, okay, none of these are, uh, you know, Fedora RPM package. Now there's a source, but I think I've already got that when I downloaded the zip. <clears throat> so, I, and it's newer, but, um, uh, it doesn't look real hard. See, there's these are the instructions on how to do it. I guess this is not the one on... This is just an instruction page. This is not the one on automated. I thought it said automated. Yeah, this is not the one. I must have clicked on the wrong one or something. Anyway, <clears throat> it doesn't sound real hard on these instructions here. Uh, you just have to install the right things on the, you know, on the right... Uh, Let's say automated build right there. But that's still not the same page that I got to. So um, I'm curious about that. Oh, that's just a picture. That's not download links. Well, there you go. Okay, and then now here's an automated build page right here. Uh, There's where you can click to download the uh, Linux version of it, and then there's a Mac OS version. And let's see, what did I write? Well, this is, uh, I'll click on it, but yeah, it just takes you, okay, it takes you to that same well, that link I just went and looked at. So here's what it looks like it shows you. Uh, where it looks like running it. So uh, this is going with an S3 provider, which I think is Amazon. I wouldn't put it on there, of course. That costs money. But I could put it on my own Fedora 29 server if I'd installed Docker and everything. Uh, <coughs> but, um, yeah, they're using the Ubuntu. I guess they're using the Ubuntu server. Or is that where they're going to get it? No, I think that's where they're going to get the, the files. But uh, sudo service docker start. That's where I got started getting a clue on what was going on here. And then it goes on through, and it, this is an automated install. Then it says done. Your, uh, your build exited with O, which I'm sure means it's good. Uh, no, zero, you know, problems. Um, but... Uh, this could take some advanced work to understand how to really do this, perhaps. Uh, maybe not. I mean, if it, could, if it just ran without any problems, it'd be great. Uh, but if it doesn't and you have hiccups, then, then you're going to need to start knowing what, you're learning, knowing what you're doing or learning what you're doing. And uh, let's see, what's this? Oh, well, this is just OBS documentation. And I tried searching for, you know, crash and... 
got nothing. Wait a minute, I did get something. Okay. Oh, when I looked through my logs, that I showed you where the logs are, I didn't know where they were till. And uh, <clears throat> nothing about Fedora. Maybe that's what I searched for and didn't find anything. But um, yeah, I just can't find anything really, you know, specific to help. Uh, there's OBS doll. That's still the same thing. Just a search that I did. But uh, yeah, in my logs. Um, my logs um i searched through i opened up like i'll open up the latest one today's and uh <clears throat> i do not find the only thing that's failed is v4 l2 input that's my webcam it's not plugged in uh and uh see if there's any errors no errors whatsoever right now and I never found the word crash. Let's see. I did make it crash a while ago. Let's see. Does that do a separate log every time you open it? Looks like maybe it does. That would probably be the one where it crashed. I don't think it says crash. It goes somewhere, but I don't I can't find the word error. When you type you know, when you T R R O R, yeah. Well, it goes somewhere, but then there's nothing to be seen. Uh, and I have read over them, but I can't. Doesn't say anything about, uh, you know, that gives me any clue as to what's wrong. Or it, that the, it doesn't give me a clue if there's anything wrong. Uh, I did see things about errors and problems when I looked in my system log. And mentioned OBS, but still not something that would tell me what's wrong and you know give me enough information that I could understand and know how to fix it. And if I was a programmer, maybe I would. But uh, <clears throat> so, um, there is one thing. Okay, let's see. Um, guess it's in the video section where I put that simple screen recorder or maybe it's in that other now I think I put simple screen recorder in that new folder because uh, because uh, I found that when I found it yesterday this is really great I used it yesterday made several quite a few videos and uh, also, you know, started out testing, and then I started make I made the video about uh, about OBS and the problems with it. It works really well. <clears throat> yes, it is faster. Well, yeah. faster than VLC and FFmpeg AVCONV. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't uh, work the system too hard at all, and. Uh, I wanted the entire screen, you know, it doesn't work. Entire screen synchronizes audio and video properly. Yeah, it was fine, no problems. And uh, it reduces the video frame rate if your video is too slow, which is cool. <laughs> Rather than using up all your RAM like VLC does, and yeah, that's what v that's probably what VLC was doing when it would slow machine down to a it would slow your machine down. If you just kept going, you would crash. I remember that. <clears throat> but I would stop it just before it was too late, you know. Uh, so anyway, um, pause and resume works. And, uh, it has a preview. That's actually the only way you know it's working uh, is to look at that preview, but then you don't want to leave it running all the time. It's just using up resources for nothing. Uh, can also do live streaming. Let's see. That's what I'm interested in. And in Devane, Fedora, Gentoo, a whole bunch of different distros. So it's really cool. And um, I already had RPM Fusion, so I just ran the DNF install. It's 
screen recorder. Let's look at the live streaming link here. Now this is the thing. Um, this may be the page, yeah, that I wanted to get back to. Let's see. It says it'll do Twitch and uh, livestream.com. I don't. I've actually never heard of. Here we go. <clears throat> Oh, that's something else. Okay. Well, let's see. Let me look down here because I may have a link to that spot. There. There we go. Okay. So, uh, oh, that might be go right back. Oh, that's that part. Okay. So, let's go here because I think this is. Oh no, that's not what I thought it was. Well, oh, wait, you did say YouTube, bro. Right? There we go. Recording username one two three ABC. This will ch change for each new live event. Yeah. Okay. Secondary server. We will not use it. Now there, yeah, that's, I think that's exactly the same uh, RTMP address they're using right now, I think. Uh, but recording name. Oh. Well, I don't understand that. So you give, how do you give it a recording name? I'm jumping around. Oh, it's still too small to read that. So, uh, That doesn't even look like anything I see. It this may be rather old. Then you start the streamer. Now what I did was I just put the address in the streaming box here, and of course I knew it wasn't going to work because I, I thought there could be an outside chance it might ask me for a login or something, but it didn't. Let's see. DMP YouTube Live to username. Oh, you append the end of the address with username one two three four A B C D. I still don't understand all that right there. Maybe you just do uh, your username. Oh, username one two three four. Okay. But what's dot ABCD? Is that your stream key or is that what you really put in there? That exact thing right there. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to go too fast here without really at least scanning through it. Oh, okay. Username one two three four B C D E F eight. I don't know. Will change it for each live event. And I'm going to use the secondary server. Yeah, and it 
it gives you you have to go through the wizard every time you start a stream which actually you make sure you get things right it's kind of seems like a pain at first but then it's actually very helpful create a new one of course you could always i, I made my settings and saved it so you could make one for streaming and one for recording you know and uh <coughs> I went through those screens quite a bit in my previous videos if you wanted to see that. My recent ones here from yesterday. About simple screen recorder. Oh, he's saying it didn't scale video because scaling video just gives the machine more work. Yeah, that makes sense. See, I just that's what I've been doing with OBS, just setting my setting my settings to what YouTube wants and go and then that's what I record as too, so there's no extra work for the machine to you know re re encode a smaller size video, you know, for the uh, for YouTube. So, I don't think those are, yeah, those are still really, well, you can kind of see them. So then the next one, is where you put in the uh, R RTMP username, and I guess username 1234.abcd, okay, I guess, uh, it might be username dot your stream key that YouTube gives you. That's what it would make sense to me. Right here. So you got to put after I, all I did was put this part in. Of course, that didn't work. So yeah, username that makes sense. That's that's how you had to do when you needed to when you were streaming VLC. You had to put if you had to, you wanted to have it where it had to be logged in to see it. You'd put the username and password in there. For the people to have to know that ahead of time before they could watch it is what it did. Or if you were trying to stream to a server that needed to log in, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's probably how you did that. That's probably different than what I'm thinking. Uh, there's an on-demand streaming that I did that I did one time. That was really cool. You could set it up. You VLC to. Uh, you could give it a whole folder full of files, and it would be on demand for. Uh, they didn't call it on demand back then, but that's what they call it all the time now for you know proprietary services. But it was on demand. They could uh, they could pick what they wanted to watch out of what you had serving up, and it could also just be rotating and playing like TV shows, you know. Anyway, and again, I didn't have uh, my neighbor. Uh, my neighbor was in computers too, and uh, I set it up one time and told him to go look at it, but he couldn't figure out how to go look at it. But. Uh, <clears throat> But I did see it that it was working. Well, then again, it could have only been working on my local network and not on the internet. I was trying to make it work on the internet. But uh, okay, username dot a b c d e f g h. Okay, yeah, that's an example. Now I'm getting it. So unless that's still part of the username example or something, and then all those random looking numbers. So I, <clears throat> what I think is it'd be username dot uh, stream key. YouTube stream key container and everything. Okay. And really, I already have my simple re screen recorder set up as uh, um. is this, the, what YouTube would take. So all I had to do is just figure that part out. If I could figure that out, then I could stream. But, the, but you're not saving a file, though. You're gonna, you're, and if anything breaks your stream, then you've lost, you know, video. And it only does desktop recordings. It doesn't do cameras or anything. So, yeah, I'm sitting there realizing, well, I could be, this time I'm doing this right here, 
thinking I'm thinking about it as I'm making the video what to do but and I realized well I could be trying to fix OBS still that's what I really intended to do today and I've done everything but Okay, but now I'm beginning to figure out, and that's something I didn't understand. I didn't stop and read through this stuff. Oh, I guess you have to go back to the YouTube website. Okay. Make sure you have all the things set up now. Back to YouTube and we click basic info. Oh, that's right. That's why I had to do with the original apps that I use for streaming. You had to set them up, get them streaming, and then you go to YouTube and you click, okay, go, start streaming on your admin page. Yeah. On, um, on the live dashboard, and it's probably, this looks kind of like older and of the way YouTube used to be, but here's what it's like now. Uh, and with uh, OBS Studio, all you have to do is click click Start Streaming. I, if, if it wasn't broken, I could do it right now and begin streaming. And it would just start streaming and be there. But with uh, XSplit, I think, uh, and here's that RTMP address I was talking about, nothing on the end. But what they're saying is put your, uh, in the uh, streaming app, you put your username in there, your YouTube username. And that's the stream key, which, you know, I'm not going to reveal it. That's like a password, um, but that you, if you want to put that into an app like OBS, you reveal it, copy and paste it into OBS, and OBS already has the this address in there. You don't have to fiddle with that, but uh, and I guess you can still do this, uh, what they're talking about, but uh, if you can, then uh, you would do what they were all what I was just looking through, and then this will change and say. You know, we have a button to say start streaming. Um, yeah. Oh, well, that's it right there. Go live. Yeah, okay. Now, here's some instructions on how to do it. Yeah. Well, let's start at the beginning. Encoder software. Before you can start streaming on YouTube, you need to download encoding software. Go ahead and look at that in a minute. That might be, tell me some, that's where I found out about some of the software I used before OBS. You may need to use uh, the server URL and the stream name key below to configure your encoding software. That's what we're just looking at in that page. Add stream info, enter to title. That would be over here. I set defaults for mine and I just leave them like that. And then when I'm once I'm done streaming, I go back and rename everything and add descriptions and stuff. <clears throat> uh, optional feature: set the late, select latency and so and so. Monetization shared options. Then on go live, uh, start streaming coder. The status will be indicate you're live. Okay. And then stop streaming. Oh, well, maybe maybe that's just how it works now. You don't have to come back here to start it. Once you, if your streamer is set up right, then it may, it may just start a stream. That is how it works with you know with OBS now. Now let's see, we're going to put this in YouTube. So, set up your live stream encoder. Now this is what, how you have to do it for sure now. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's different options. Best encoding software depends on your needs. YouTube Live, verified devices software. Mobile capture, a YouTube gaming app, mobile live, record and stream. This is for, you know, from phones and tablets.
for YouTube Live on mobile, your channel must have 100 subscribers. Well, I didn't know that, so I couldn't do it anyway. <coughs> um, I don't know. I'm not doing gaming, so I don't know about that. Webcam, stream your desktop. You can do that with a um, web browser that works, I guess. Air server, Windows and Mac. Mirror your mobile device. So, most of this is about mobile stuff nowadays. It wasn't like that. Didn't used to be like nothing about mobile. Now that they've made a mobile uh, where it works, now that's all they want to talk about. Elgato, Windows and Mac. Uh, Epiphian Webcaster, any HDMI device. Never heard of that, huh? From a HDMI camera. Oh, mixer, console, or other device with compact hardware encoder. Connect your USB camera for live switching and picture. This must be like a more of a semi-pro device you can buy. Yep, there it is. Huh. Let's see. I don't know where to put that really. Uh, I'm putting it with cameras. It's not a camera, but $299. All right. <clears throat> Game show. Windows and Mac. Sling Studio. Now, I know what that is. That's another uh, portable multi-camera broadcast platform. Switch and edit. Well, it's a little little more a uh, little more up. Uh, uh, Fancier than it used to be. Let's look at it. There you go. It's a hardware. I still don't know. I don't really want. It's not cameras, but it's related to cameras, so I'll put it in there. Nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Oh, is that all? Um, stage ten. I'm not gonna look at any more. Oh, Streamlabs OBS. That's, that's an app. Huh. Let's put that in OBS. I think it's for OBS. Oh, that says Windows 7. I thought it was a uh, camera and tablet app. Windows 7 Plus. So this is a Windows. Okay. But I guess it's uh, using OBS Studio, though. Built on OBS. Yeah. It's an HDMI camera. Voo. Voodoo, voodoo, or is that voodoo, or I guess that's voodoo. Yeah, that's another one. Doesn't even say the price, so it must be expensive. Wirecast, that was the first one. It only says iOS now. Wirecast used to have a, well, it had a Windows and a Linux. Oh, there's another one, Wirecast. So there's one for Wirecast Play. Maybe, uh, no, I don't think it did have a Linux. I think I was using it in Windows 7. XSplit. I could never get Wirecast to connect. It was really hard. It'd probably be a lot easier now. That was in 2016. Free 9.99 Play Limited version. YouTube. Stream to YouTube only. Was well, it free or is it 9.99? Six hundred and eighty-five dollars, nine hundred and eighty-five dollars. You don't even get a link. <clears throat> All right. Um, I remember that it was both of this one worked really well and really easy. Well, I took a learning curve, but oh yeah, this is uh, 
I guess it's like the YouTube page for X, but because I was just at their website the other the other day, not OBS. Uh, but yeah, Windows only. Maybe this is the page I was at, and I just forgot what it looked like. I remember that guy's picture, funny looking picture. Uh, I mean, it just looks so fake. That's why it looks funny. Anyway, <clears throat> you're not a funny looking guy. I just a funny looking picture. Okay, so um, yeah, you could uh, yeah, it's a Windows executable. Oh, no. I don't want that. What the heck? I didn't download it. I just was trying to see what the heck I was going to get. And it's Windows, so I can't use it. You should have a link for uh, more info there. So anyway, I already figured that out yesterday. Windows only. X Split Gamecaster. Uh, Free version available. It's, you know, tweaked for games, I guess. And so, oh, and then encoders down at the very bottom, the best one of all, OBS Studio. Except for right now, <laughs> it's <laughs> broken. So this is what I had forgotten to do is go back here. But gosh, there's just no, there is no options. Um, let's see about that one. Just because it says gaming doesn't mean it might not work. Because especially since gaming is for doing desktop videos and uh, card your gameplay. Sometimes it says that because that's popular and then it, it actually will work with any kind of desktop recording. It's got to have Android 5. Or 5.11. Well, my phones are 4.3. Now, the tablet's probably that new. And uh, stream gameplay. Except for gameplay usually uh, focuses on the one app, the game, and so do your whole desktop. So it might be 480 or 720. Well, that's low. I mean, I'm doing 720 to OBS and then. 1080p from OBS to YouTube. Um, and my, all my cameras. Now on the desktop, it's 1080p. Boy, OBS is so much better. This is actually an app, so. I don't think it, uh, well, like I said, I can't use it on my phones, and I don't want to just stream straight from my phone because then I couldn't have any of the other stuff. I just kept skipping all the uh, mobile live app. Yeah, you have to have a hundred webcam. Let's see what that. Well, that's just from your. Yeah, well, then set up your encoder. Oh, Chrome 60 Plus and Firefox 53. So you do it through your browser. Yeah, I've been seeing that in, uh, you know, on the YouTube page. Yeah, right there. But that's not what I'm wanting to do. Let's click on it and see. Let's see, yeah, I was done looking at all that anyway. So, um, go live. I do have, well, I don't, see, I don't have a webcam. I'm not using a webcam. I'm using, uh, yeah, see, no webcam. My uh, phone is streaming over a uh, VLC stream over the network, picking it up with OBS Studio. Can't find a camera. So that's what happens when you do that, when you're not, <clears throat> don't have a US. And I, my old webcams are too old to use. They're too low resolution. And I mean, if I bought a new webcam, I could do that, but that still wouldn't do. I mean, I'm just too spoiled now to have full desktop cameras, whatever I want you know, with OBS. We just have to... We have to fix OBS. I don't know how to fix it, so I have to. <laughs> I probably end up waiting until they they figure out what's going on and fix it. People, the developers. 
I'm pretty sure it's OBS and not Fedora because it's happening Windows, it's happening Fedora 29, it, it's been happening on and off since at least for uh, OBS uh, 2016. I think it's a thing that comes and goes. So yeah, XSplit, Gamecaster, um, oh yeah, that's Windows only. This might actually have more of the features I want. But again, it's Windows. So, open broadcaster. What's that stream now? Simply copy the server URL and stream name key into your encoder. Live event. Yeah, well, with Open Broadcaster, you do that. Is that about Open Broadcaster? I'm not quite sure what these drop downs are for. There's OBS, Windows, Mac, 10.11 Plus, and Linux. And this is what I'm recording on right now. And, uh, boy, this must be the only one that's really good. And it's completely free and open source. Let's see, what is this? Create a live stream. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's how I got to the encoder pages. Let's, uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Download an encoder. Okay, then using the stream name, key, and server URL. Learn more about encoders. Add the title description. Okay, I need to learn more about encoders. What is an encoder? Oh, maybe I don't. Let's see. Maybe it's not what I thought. Encoder compresses audio and video. Yeah, okay. Well, I might not know all the exact technical details, but uh, but I don't know how to use them. Okay. Yeah, they have live chat, of course. Once in a great while, somebody says something during my stream. But events, mobile webcam. Okay, I don't think that page has got any more stuff on it. Latency and all that stuff. <clears throat> okay. That would probably be some good help right there. YouTube has plenty of, and, and Google has plenty of good help. It's just so spread out and hard to find what you're really looking for let's see so back to the uh, simple stream recorder let's see Twenty fifteen, yeah, that's why the uh, interface looked old. Screenshots of the interface. Okay, so I guess you know this may not even work anymore. Username and I guess stream key. So uh, let's see. I saw. Let's see. I saw a different post about somebody saying they did it and it worked. This is just, this is saying YouTube, but they're saying don't put it on YouTube. They're talking about trying to fix problems and stuff. Oh yeah, you can make desktop videos with Kden Live, the video editor, but uh, 
uses a lot of resources, or it did. <clears throat> I'm not even sure if I have Kden Live on this system. I've been so into doing it's so been so great to just you know when I'm making a video I do it live and once I'm done I'm done uh, not having to upload or edit or anything uh, I haven't even opened up I've tried to use a Kden Live in quite some time. This might be it right here. I'd like to share my experience with uh, using a simple screen recorder. Yeah, this is the one. The Twitch is the only one explained. They said, but this page is. Well, that's not, uh, that's a different page altogether. So anyway, let's see. Um, okay, YouTube events, it gives you ID, user ID, server, and now an SSR, save as YouTube, live to user ID, dot ZZ, so and so, so and so. I'm still not sure if uh, you would, I think you would have to have the stream key in there. You do in every other app I've ever used. You can't just use your user ID, then anybody could use, they know your user ID, they could stream to your channel, you know, so. So I don't quite get uh, what they're saying there. And he said he used FLV H264, which I knew that, that's what YouTube wants. And MP3 is good, or AAC, 128 kilobytes. This may be the one I just got through reading. Yeah, that's where I was at. Yeah. So that's how I found that and saved it in my bookmarks. But neither one of them are saying anything about the stream key. Uh, maybe because they're, yeah, this is 2015. So maybe back then you could do that without the stream key. That's not going to work now. I don't know that it'll work at all now. <clears throat> uh, yeah, let's see. I'm trying to think. Well, I was, I would really kind of like to try it, but uh, I thought it'd be kind of neat to try it on the video, but I got to be careful. You know, I don't want to show my stream key or anything. And, well, I did do it yesterday, and it worked. Uh, yeah, I made videos. I made video with OBS and Simple Screen Recorder at the same time with no conflicts. They both picked up my SM58 mic and did desktop videos and everything. Uh, I just did a short one just to see if it would work, and it did. But I'm sure, you know, it was going to work the machine harder. See, like OBS is using, eight, I saw 18%, now 12%. And then the other app was using about 12% or 17%, uh, which actually is still not terrible. Um, but, uh, I don't know if uh, user ID dot so-and-so, if that's supposed to be the uh, stream key something that makes any sense to me but they never say stream key I don't think they had implemented the stream key maybe they mean password because I think what you used to do is use your YouTube password way back then um, but it looks like they're still using the same server which would make sense for the ingest server the primary ingest server since they, ever since they started YouTube Live, and um, I'll open up Simple Screen Recorder. I haven't forgotten. I'll stay on camera for an hour. Have I? No. Okay. So. Um, Dawn, I actually misspelled. I was trying to say simple, and I put sinful, but that's the 
that's what I've been using on OBS. It's all the same there. What you have to change is the output. Um, instead of it going to your local, so you can't do, you can't record to your machine and. Um, locally at the same time with this app let's see and so YouTube is just for saving locally at a lower bit rate and lower it makes a lower file size and everything the live stream that is actually the minimum 3000 that YouTube says they take now and so when you do that well actually it didn't change everything on me there's a RTPMP address up there now so I'm still doing FLV 3000 mp3 everything's good there so i would do that now here's the part i didn't do yesterday because i didn't catch on now i'm going to go ahead and go to the camera for a minute because i don't want to show any more of this you can reset your stream key i didn't know you could do that um, so I'm getting my stream key, <coughs> and, um, uh, see, it was a dot. Yeah, all those funny letters they kept putting in there, I think maybe it was your stream key. Okay, now, and my preview is good. Now let's get back on the desktop so I have a good preview and I went to next right after that now you would hit start recording yeah YouTube's not going to show anything uh, unless it works I guess and it'll show my uh, stream let's see if it works so uh, previews working so I'm going to stop it because it's just using more resources well it will yeah let's go ahead now I'll start the preview because then it it crashed or something I would know okay it says it's recording and it did oh look receiving your content oh my gosh <laughs> let's see if it's gonna work that would be awesome okay it is working even your content oh my gosh <laughs> there it is it's working so that's how you do it it's actually not so hard after all um, you put your, uh, oh, I lost, got away from the page. You put that, uh, you put this address in there and then you put forward slash your username and then dot your stream key. That's what you do. So, um, and I'm going to pause this so it won't be using up more resources and, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and Simple Stream Recorder follows me around the desktop, so uh, whatever I show will work. And now it's using a little a lot heavier doing streaming, a whole lot heavier. And I'm also doing OBS at the same time, but um, 40%. Now, I want, when you're just recording a video, it was only doing... Um, uh, I'm blank. It was only doing about 17% generally, I thought, from what I remember. I thought it might go down after a little bit, but it looks like it's going to ride right there at 39-40%. Um, that could be a problem, you know, trying to stream for a couple of hours working on the computer, but it might be doable. And, uh, you know, I can't do cameras, but that's okay. I mean, of course, I could do... Uh, backdoor trick. And, of course, I wouldn't be trying to... Actually, I could be saving a video from OBS at the same time, but see how much, and just watch my resources. I may try that if I can't get OBS working. That is something that could be done then. So everything that I uh, do here now is being streamed, which is cool. And now I'm just so flustered that it actually worked that easy once you figure out what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Oh, my stream health is not good now. Um, let's see what happens if I play it back. 
can actually see it. Yeah, okay, I can actually see what I just showed about that. Because I, you know, when you pause it, you can do that. Now let me re re uh, load it, and it'll come back up to where I'm at now. <clears throat> but it isn't uh, Streamout is not good though. I might need to drop back on the uh, frames per second. Well, no, you're supposed to re uh, load it, and it'll come back up to where I'm at. It's been doing that. YouTube was doing that on me all the time anyway. It was it would start out yellow and then it would get better and then sometimes uh, I would lose my stream. That's why I don't want to stream only. It's because sometimes the stream gets uh, broken and OBS will automatically reconnect and you don't lose a thing in your recording. You know, As a matter of fact, if it reconnects fast enough, you... Um, your stream won't even be, it won't even be noticeable in your stream. I thought at times, well, I'm going to have to go, I'd go looking at the video and say, okay, what am I going to have to upload my backup? And uh, didn't end up having to. So uh, I keep these both open. Simple screen recorder. Should be making a video right now. Oh, no, I'm not making a video right now. I'm doing a stream, so you're not going to see anything. Okay. That makes sense now. I'm confused. Uploads to do. I need to. I put those over there just temporarily to up do uploads, and now I'm. Uh, I don't. I got. I don't want to leave them in there. So anyway, um, yeah, the stream is not very happy. Let's see. What are we getting? This tells you exactly what. You, okay. I'm staying steady on my frames per second. 1920 by 1080. RTMP file size. I'm only doing uh, 800, 400 at 900 kilobits per second, even though I was set at 3000. Now, OBS was defaulted to 2500, and that worked good. Uh, unless. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't let the preview stay playing since it works the machine that hard. Unless uh, that went up to 1,100 and something. So this is, uh, that's probably why my stream health isn't good. Um, machine, my machine probably can't quite, yeah, it's still staying up there. My machine probably can't handle that high bit rate. Well, especially twice, uh, you know, two, two, um, machine two programs running at the same time I, what I need to do is uh, go ahead and stop OBS and see if it uh, <clears throat> gets any better on the stream <coughs> yeah, I think I will so uh, yeah see now I can switch to the camera and of course simple screen recorder can see the preview here um, you see whatever whatever desktop I'm on so uh, and it's paused right now but uh, so I'm going to stop my OBS, <coughs> see if that improves things, and close <coughs> OBS, <coughs> and see if that improves that stream. Well, the only way I can conceive really of using it, though, is to run them both at the same time, <coughs> um, so that OBS would be my backup stream. So it may not really be a solution, because um, I might as well just record and upload like I've been doing. I'm just really getting tired of doing that. But I'm spending so much time trying to fix it. Uh, you know, I'm spending more time trying to fix it than I had was was when I was just uploading each day. Okay, so I'm going to stop this uh, this OBS and leave the. Let's see if it's still running. Yeah, it's still running, but it's still yellow. So um, oh, I forgot to switch to the desktop. But anyway, I'm going to stop OBS now. All right.